For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a full breakdown video for you guys today. If you guys don't follow this channel, if you don't know, every single month I try to put out a full breakdown of an offense or a defense for my people here on YouTube. They're just my subscribers on YouTube. What this is is typically the stuff that you get in the members areas, whether it's on my Patreon, my Join Now community tab, or if you purchase my books. So basically what this is, is it kind of shows you what you get. With the exception of the books, obviously you get written format like uh, descriptions. You get, uh, you know, written breakdowns downs on how to run the plays what defenses they work in stuff like that where this one here is just a quicker compilation of all the links now this is also not the full version the full version is only in my ebooks and in my pay sites uh, because it's not fair to the people that pay i don't want to piss anybody off that pay so this is probably about half or maybe less than half of the normal ebook size but you can always get the full version in the description there's plenty of links for that other than that's going to get right into the video where you get to also see it in a, in a format because a lot of people like to see it in video, obviously, since I do YouTube. If you guys want me to continue to do this series, as always, Woo! please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comments section. And what playbook you want to see next month is always helpful as well. I put out a poll today for this particular video. I put out a poll which defense do you guys want, and multi-D won by a landslide. So that's why I'm doing multi-D today. Uh, next month, like I said, it's totally open, offense or defense. Let me know in the comments section. Other than that, let's go and skip right into the video. Next up, we have the cover four drop. So it was another good uh, run defense. If you pinch the defense especially, you can hard flat set your flats to five or zero uh, for good run D. You can see for whatever reason, this is one of the few cover four defenses. I mean, I could baseline show blitz baseline too to get those safeties down, but not the corners if you're worried about pass plays. But this is one of those, um, you know, few defenses here where um you get good uh you get good pass coverage it's hard to one play as you can see there we get that um you know the safety is obviously playing down like that can be dangerous in pass plays we got the knockout but uh but yeah it's a good run defense good pass defense good base defense you can send a blitz from this i guess we get to stop on the run there that was a run play i want to see what the safeties did because most cover four safeties aren't playing the run first but i got a feeling that this one might be so here you can see they actually do walk down. This cover four still plays the run first. These safeties play the run first. Cover four match does not. So this regular cover four, like I said, they still play the run first, which is nice. So I have a better, a good run defense. But like I said, this is just like, you know, this is a versatile play because you could do the blitz setup that I was doing earlier where you're gonna slant everybody inside. And this should get some instant heat off the edge if it's a if it's a pass play, which it does. We get a sack. So this is a very versatile defense. Probably the best run defense. One of the better pass defenses. One of the harder defenses to hit a one play touchdown against. I said I like the baseline show this based on to keep these safeties towards the center of the field a little bit, which will have them a little vulnerable. But if you want to blitz, you can obviously pinch the entire defense. There's other setups for that. Let's see that this is a pass play. You can see everybody's getting back, and there's really nothing there as I just blew that. I mean, the coverage was there. I just I just didn't use that very well. Good thread by Mahomes. That's what he does. Like I said, you can always, if you want to blitz, though, you want to play aggressive, you can pinch the entire defense, slant them inside, and you can blitz all, and then you don't have any, you know, you won't have any uh, outside help, but you can always drop back with uh, with the middle linebacker and try to take away one of these short routes. You can see it piles up pretty well uh, against the run too, even though I was trying to blitz. You can just blitz all too. I mean, you don't have to be so obvious that you're blitzing all. You can just blitz all like this and just, you know, drop back. You can see we're getting pressure everywhere. I mean, it's a very versatile defense, run and pass. Obviously, if your opponent's in a two wide receiver set or something under center, it's gonna be even easier. So probably one of the better for play, uh, defenses to use. Next up, we got the cover for quarters. Now, this play, I'm definitely, if it's a, if I think it's going to be a run, I'm going to pinch this defense. I'm going to bring this guy down here. I mean, this is a very good run defense like this. And then hard flatting. Because ultimately, this guy here is going to man this safety anyway. Or the man this slot receiver anyway. And then I'm going to basically bring this guy back into the single high third. And this is going to be my setup. So, you know, I could, it, it, with this setup, I could definitely uh, use your uh, Dean here because he's on a blitz. I don't really want him on a blitz. But, uh, but yeah, this is pretty much the look as far as a base defense package. 
And then you can see how uh, Travis Kelsey's constantly just sitting in the zone. And nothing's open. I mean, everything's locked up for, you know, the first time with a cover with a 3-4. And I'm undermanned because at the end of the day, um, I have a... Um, I'm trying to get this linebacker back here. I have a, 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 a defense that's, you know, when you have three wide receivers, you don't really want three... Um, you, you want another DB on the field. So I, I don't really mean to... Uh, to, to pinch these these <laughs> these um these cornerbacks the way that I did, but something similar to this. It's basically this is the setup. Something I've been showing in a lot of different uh, defenses. The three rack hook is actually a really good um, a really good uh, zone coverage that'll cover well over the middle. And then you can see there that quick throw. He just barely got that out over the top. Go ahead and I'll do that again. Like I guess I'm trying to base the line and get this linebacker back where I want him, but it's not letting me do that. So it is what it is. I don't know if I can pinch the defense and get him in there. I don't know. That 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 I don't like about this. It's not really letting me bring that linebacker back because this is something that's a really good run defense, but it might not work if you have a three wide receiver set like this. So I might have to choose something where I have another um, you know, another uh, thing is this, this guy barely gets a couple yards there out of the backfield. I don't know if he did. That might have been at the line of scrimmage. So I'm gonna back out and pick something that's a different formation. Something that's a little bit more run heavy like a two wide receiver set if they have it because this is a good a good run defense let's go let's pick that and you can see we still have the linebacker out there so that's something that they changed and i don't really care about makes me have to like walk him back uh, because this can be a really good goal line defense which i'll show here in a minute too so we'll go ahead and we'll just run this as is like i said it's a good uh we get the sack there actually because we get the, the elongated play action and dean was on the pass rush but let's go ahead and let's pick some goal line defense plays Plays like, um, like uh, you know, QB sneak, stuff like that. Well, QB sneak. I said all I'm really gonna do is is pinch the uh, pinch the pinch the entire defense, slant everybody inside, and you know if I if I expect QB sneak, bring this guy down, and you'll see how he doesn't typically get the yard. We're gonna move up to the goal line because I can't really tell if he's actually getting. <clears throat> the push not that we'll be able to tell in practice mode anyway but let's go ahead and let's get this all the way up to the one up to the one yard line here as um yeah it's getting a little bit choppy so yard to gain like i said I, I a lot of times i'll blitz the entire package and like i said he should cover that hole like i said there boom doesn't get that yard Against the fullback dive, you will have to blitz all. And it's not as secure. I would say it probably is best to blitz this uh, safety here on the backside to help out in fullback dive defense. Because you can see he, he does. I don't know if he got in there. It looks like they're, they're celebrating like he did. It's not as stout. So, like I said, in a fullback dive setup, since you don't necessarily know, you're going to want that extra help with the blitzing safety. As you can see right there, there we uh, the, the guy gets through. You want that extra blitzer. Blitzing works. So let's go and let's do that one more time. I said blitz them. They'll still have some zone coverages for whatever reason, if it's something else. And then you can see, boom, we get that stop. I almost feel like this works better against fullback dive if you don't bring this uh, linebacker down because you can see it eventually creates a pileup. But it doesn't necessarily work that way against the QB sneak. Next up, we got the cover six. Uh, this here is just a good, you know, good mix to throw in. I'm going to man Kelsey. I'm going to use her the three rack hook. Um, although I thought that was a three rack hook, it's not. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much the look here. Like I said, I can pinch defense if I think it's going to be a uh, run or spread them if I think it's going to be a pass. And you can see how we're, you know, we're, we're getting good coverage. I, I man Kelsey, but once again, linebackers don't really cover too good. Um, I'm not really going to get a ton of <laughs> good coverage. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I could use this, you know, since it's cover four too, I could always um, man the safety also, but then that's kind of a... A tough spot so I would say this is just a good defense to mix in because every once in a while there's people that don't know how as I'm trying to go back to the main defense here there's people that just don't know how to play against this type of hybrid 
Next up, we have the, what are we at here? Tampa 2. No, I'm sorry, the Pinsbuck 0. Let's do the Pinsbuck 0. I mean, all you really gotta do is guess pass. Um, I don't really find that, I mean, if you want to use this play, you could always blitz this guy and be in the same position where you gotta use the running back, and it's not a bad option. I'll go ahead and I'll do that again, although I don't always wanna be in this position. Uh, where I have such a stressful, um, you know, job. I think it's better on this play to just use or this guy and drop back. And this is a similar play where you just basically slant inside. I'm going to play over the top um, because, you know, a simple streak could be problematic. But you can see how we're getting that same edge pressure from one of the outside linebackers. Like I said, you need fast cornerbacks. Like, I have a, I have a speed disadvantage here um, with... Um, with James Bradbury, so I really could choose to just basically slant these guys inside and just don't press at all. I'll guess pass, and uh, you know I just got to drop back. Once Brad, once the play starts, got to drop back with Bradbury, and I'll still have you know some edge pressure for the most part, but it's less consistent. So that's something to think about. It works way better if you pinch the entire defense, but it's also a little bit more dangerous. So let's go. Let's drop Bradbury back. You know what I mean? If we have like any real speed disadvantages like that, let's make sure we, we drop them back by themselves. Then we can do it like normal, slant everybody inside. And now we'll see how we'll get that free edge rusher once again because it really works best from a pinch set. So, like I said, pinch it, but don't let any of your slower cornerbacks get in danger. And we're already set up. It's not too difficult of a setup. One of these outside linebackers is just going to come flying off the edge. And Mahomes is just running for his life instant. So a very quick pressure system from this play. Next up out of the three for odd, we have the Saul Blitz 1. So in this play, I'm just going to pinch the defense. And I'm going to slant inside. Then I'm going to take my guy here and put him on a pass rush or, or a blitz. i got to watch the running back. That's the only thing. But this should bring everybody inside to the point where we get an edge rusher just free off the edge. I thought it was going to come from the other side, but I'll take it. It came off a right side the same way. This is a very unique defense. The coverage is pretty good too. But because I come in the middle here, it basically forces one of the tackles to come inside to, to help out with the shortest route. So I'll pinch the defensive line again. I don't know why Bradley's on the play. Like I said, I want to get this guy, if I have time, I want to get this guy, as I messed up the, the blitzing linebacker, I want to get this guy out on Kelsey, obviously. Although it's not letting me do that. They're not staying, so I have to walk him back a little bit more. But I don't want to give that up. So, like I said, slant inside. Guess pass. Got to drop back on that running back pretty quick. As you can see, Rag is just around that corner, but he gets out the running back, and I'm going to Johnny on the spot for a five-yard loss. Pinch the D-line. Like I said, get this guy out if you can. Pinch the D-line, slant inside. Sometimes you got to do that twice in practice mode. Guess pass. Everybody's caving in here. We're getting some instant egg, or instant pressure. And you got that running back. That's probably the hardest part is getting down that running back if he runs the route up the field because that is your responsibility. Could cheat outside here a little bit. This could help to get the other linebacker off as you can see it gets Reddick off again and like I said that running back you know your opponent's gonna be on that so you really gotta be aware of that as you can see I mean if I'm not John's spot honestly I'm in a practice mode so I'm kind of playing it lazy <laughs> so it is what it is but like I said if I really wanted to to nut up on this on this back I could do that I don't care what he runs this time I'm gonna cover it as you can see we're all over that and, and he's running for his life and has to throw it away Although the running back did get open eventually. I said that's going to be your biggest issue here. I mean, if you really wanted to, if you didn't want to worry about that running back so much, give yourself a single high safety look. Could do that too. And then it really becomes on you to, you know, this is this might be vulnerable over the top. I actually messed everything up anyway as the play didn't work out the same. So no, you can't do that. So, pinch that D. Slant inside, guess pass. I'm gonna cheat over as much as I can because I gotta get on that running back. That's the one thing. Don't forget that running back. And we're getting sacks before that running back can even get out of the backfield anyway. So, very good play. Next up, we got the Will Buck three press. 
It's another play where you're really just going to pinch the defense. And I think slanting outside is a good move, but slanting inside is probably the better move. And guessing pass. Now, this is going to come most likely from the left side outside linebacker. So, I'm going to go ahead and just drop back on the tight end. As you can see, this entire pressure package is pretty much the same. Like I said, we're just going to, you know, we're, we're trying to, that's why we're on this side. We're trying to pull, I don't know why it's not letting me, yeah, there we go. We're trying to pull guys over here, or at least make them all cave in before I drop back on the tight end on Kelsey. So if I really want to, you know, obviously I got to get back quick, and you can see we're just getting off the edge very fast, very instant pressure defense uh, package, pretty much everything in the three for odd. Next up, we got the four quarters. Probably the best base defense. I'm just going to basically uh, man any slot receiver or tight end. Although in this scenario, I probably want to do it to Kelsey and put the other guy here on an inside third. Just create like a cover four hybrid type of thing. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I can hard flat if I want, um, you know, underneath coverage better. But I'm really just going to, like, as I called, underneath coverage better. Um, but, yeah, this is just a base defense. I don't know why Nick Sirianni was, had to get drug off the... <laughs> had to get drove off the field there in practice, but um, I guess he's still mad about the Super Bowl. Either way, this is pretty much the look here. So it's just a base defense, and it's a pretty good. Um, I mean, if I if I want to, you know, pinch against the run, I could have done that. Spread the linebackers against, uh, you know, for outside runs. This would probably be how I'd want to set up this base defense, as I didn't really go to the full extent. But but yeah, I mean, basically, um, you know. Now I have a pinched alignment inside to stop inside runs. I have linebackers outside if I hard flat them to stop outside runs. It's pretty much going to be the look. Set my flash to zero. Five or zero as we get a covered sack. Five or zero for outside run defense when it comes to the hard flats. Next up, we got the free fire. A couple of different ways you can do this. You can pinch the defensive line, spread the linebackers. A couple of different ways to do this. If you uh, pinch the D-line and slant them inside, I find it's best. And then whoever's using the running back, just basically bring them over the line like this, put them on a blitz. And you can see how you know you can get pressure. That was a play action that actually helped out the quarterback. I should have guessed pass. If I had guessed pass, it would have worked out better. But, um, but yeah, pinch the defensive line, slant them inside. I'll guess pass this time, although I didn't get the, the, the slant inside. There we go. Guess pass this time. Basically, just hover this gap on a blitz, and then I got to drop back on that running back. And you can see we get a lot of uh, get an A gap pressure there as we get a little bit of a play action play. Said really easy setup though. So I'm staying on the I'm staying on the inside half here, and you can see we're getting uh, some switch pressures. This is basically to try to get some inside pressure instead of outside pressure all the time. Next up, we have the FS Fire One. Same idea. I mean, we're going to want to be on this guy before we make our pinch, slant inside, you know, maybe man align this guy here, and then, you know, cover the running back from this position. I guess pass this time. I wasn't doing that on the last one because I don't really know. I'm running against random plays. You see, coverage is good. Mom's has to throw it away as the safety was eventually coming in. Coming in pretty quick. I mean, I say eventually, but it was pretty quick. So, one more time. I'm not going to align on the tight end. It is what it is. If it was Kelsey, I'd be more worried about it. So, I'm going to blitz. Got a run play. Like I said, the pinch does a pretty good job, although Pacheco is dancing in there, man. He was just dancing to get something out of that. You can pinch the entire defense, too, because it is a man coverage, so it's a little less worrisome. And we got the play here. I'll guess pass this time. I don't think I guess passing last time. I'm not really sure. And you can see we're getting the pressure from the outside as we did get a check and release on the tight end. I think we had a check and release from the running back too, but he still comes flying around. Next up, we got the FS Fire 3. Another play here. If you're going to set up this blitz, you're going to want to you're going to want to move the you want to use the safety because he's going to go back otherwise. So use the safety, then pinch the defensive line and slant them outside. And then I'm going to put the uh, my my uh, my user on a blitz and just drop back after the snap. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. And I don't know what happened because the safety 
Um, the safety got mauled by a tight end or something. I'm not really sure what happened. I'll do that again. They're accidentally pinched, but I don't feel like fixing it. So it is what it is. So we're going to get that look again. Said safety coming around the edge. Not too clean. South safety. Bringing them out here. Pinching the defensive line. Slanting them inside. Got to do it twice. There we go. Then just stay home for a tick. And get back. And you can see the safety gets around the edge. Although he can't tackle. Because it's Reed Blankenship. But he did get him eventually. So, you know. Pretty good uh, play. This is a cover three mat. So it's a pretty good coverage on the backside too. But you can see if I make my adjustment after the fact. Reed Blankenship runs back. Which is something I don't want. And for whatever reason. Um, this linebacker seems to be able to stay here so I could always like you know use that to my advantage and try to kind of treat him like a bluff blitz now I'm using Reddick on the outside although he got forgotten pretty quick decent run defense inside because of the pinch as well next up out of the 4-3 under we have the hammer zero blast this play here everybody's manned so I'm just gonna bring this guy down. I can bring him over the middle. I can bring him to the to the guard gap. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is just a straight up man zero blitz. You can slant your edge guys outside so they have a little bit of you know a little bit uh, easier time getting around. Man zero safeties and man coverage do a good job of playing the run as you can see right there. Um, I don't know this this line here. I mean, if I really expect pass, I could spread like this. But I really find it's best. To slant inside because I really want to get the the outside linebacker off the edge. So I'm going to slant inside, and I'm also going to I'm going to pinch, and I'm going to slant inside so this outside guy can just get off like that. You know what I mean, like that's really the way to go. Obviously, you don't want to use this against like gun formations and stuff like that as much. Um, but I didn't even guess pass the last time, which is also going to help. So here we go one more time. Like I said, slanting inside, pinching inside, and Rex going to just get around that edge. Um, and the pinch does a decent job of helping with run support, although he got around it. That's the thing. If you're pinching like that, you can't get around it. But if you try to run through it, it's a different story. So here I got a different look because I, I pinched before I, I got the linebacker down, which is interesting. So pinch, slant, inside. Going for that loop and blitz again, although that time gets picked up. And you know, man coverage is not the or man zero blitz is not the best pass defense, obviously. So I'm gonna do that one more time. I said that last time didn't have right look because I wasn't in the middle. You wanna I guess you wanna wait till you get in the center spot here. Still keep forgetting, and here they're blocking everybody. We still oh no, we got a check and release. So yeah, check and release helped out for a split second, but Reg still got in. So very good blitz. Next up we got the Sam Crash one. So this play here. Just pinch the defensive line, slant them inside, and then I'm going to blitz Dean here and just try to pull the entire uh, line in. I'm also going to guess pass if I expect the pass, but I'm going to try to pull these five blockers inside so that Reddick can get around outside. Now, that was a check and release, so if you have a check and release on the tight end, he will help out with that. You could always change that, though, just by basically, um, you know, moving them outside a little bit to basically help out that if you have time. <clears throat> so one more time just trying to pull everybody across it's going to be even better to pull everybody across if I'm you know closer I am to the center or even to the left side and you can see boom he comes around the edge there although the running back was just on a straight up pass rush or pass block so he did pick him up once again but this is something that if you have a five on five blocking um, it will be enough to get Redick around the edge so here, got the, I didn't guess pass, or that would have been an instant sack. That's my fault, because he did come in clean. He did come in off the edge, but I, I forgot to guess pass, so I didn't get the guess pass animation. We'll guess pass this time. Like I said, if I can move him out, that's, you know, for the best, but it's not the end of the world. So, one more time. There he is, coming clean off the edge. All the way out of run play. We stuffed that down because, you know, the pinch is going to do that. One more time. And there's just an alt. Like they're blocking everybody there. I saw a double team on the edge and everything. So that was never going to get the pressure. That was that was like an eight-man, seven-man blocking. 
this is like I said, this is more for like a five on five. We're trying to get like a five on five pressure here. There we go. Come off the edge. All the running back picked him up. Oh, and he got through it anyway because it was a check and release. So, yeah. So, like I said, the running back's blocking. If there's six blockers, it doesn't necessarily get the most pressure. But anything less, if it's like a five on five even, you will get pressure. Next up, we got the three double buzz. Let's go and let's pick that. It's another play. Once again, want to put a safety at your middle linebacker spot. I keep forgetting to do that, but that's fine. These, these uh, hook curls are terrible. So I'm just going to put them on the slot receiver and the tight end. And this is pretty much going to be the defense. At this point, I'm going to use our defensive end. I'm just going to drop back into coverage and uh, try to take away any short routes. Although there, I pretty much got caught up. That was a speed out route. That's going to beat cover three because the cornerback drops back. Not a lot you can do about that, but it's not a big gain either. So like I said, this is pretty much the look. Since everybody's manned up, I can use her this defensive end too. If I think it's going to be a run, I'll pinch the defensive line. I think it's going to be a pass. I'll spread them. But since everybody's pretty much manned up, I mean, I don't really have to, as we get a, a stop there, I don't really have to um, worry too much about deep middle unless I see one of the outside receivers running a deep route. So that's something where if I want to, I can stay at the middle linebacker spot and, you know, just use her this guy. Or like I said, I can use a defensive end if I don't want to worry about that. So if you're a competent user, just, you know, ha handle that, uh, handle the, the single high safety role yourself but if you're not um you can always just drop down to one of these defensive linemen it's just a little hard to get off the line in this year's game as i noticed on the last play like i'm getting swallowed up here but like i said decent run defense too because once again when you ever you uh man a safety they seem to play the run the best and you can see who makes the play here both of the safeties just come crashing down both of them you know what I mean? It's like both of them are man coverage. They both come flying in. I clicked on and messed that up or else I got to tackle them for like a two-yard two yard gain. But, you know, it's amazing how these man safeties play the run. So, one more time. So, we'll play this like it's a run play even though I really don't have any idea. Probably a jet sweep because that's what they do the most. As you can see, like I said, we can play over the middle here. But then the, uh, the outside receivers were pretty uncovered. So, one more time. You can man whoever you want too. Like if you if you want to use those man coverage defenders to both receivers on one side or whatever you want to do. Next up we have cover team man. So this is a good base defense. I find you can pinch the entire defense and really just if you're on a hash mark like I am here, I can walk this guy down and just pay attention just to 86. Just as long as 86 and 87 don't run. Um, you know, 86 is the only one that can really beat this defense with like a streak as we get an obvious run play. But um, as long as A6 doesn't run a streak or something like that, you know, you're, you're good as far as covering the middle because the tight end's not going to beat, you know, anybody on a streak. He's not going to score one play touchdown. So like I said, as long as there's nothing out here, I can just basically go back to whatever. And you can see man coverage is pretty tight this year as everything was pretty much locked up. But like I said, if I, if I pinch the defense like this, then like I said, I can guess, I can go over the top if I'm worried about it, but... Um, you know, the left side, the open side's taken care of, and I really just have to watch for 86. As long as he doesn't run a streak, I'm good here as we get another run play. Cover two man's not a great inside run play, though, a run defense, though, as the safeties typically drop back. Next up, we got the cover three cloud. This is just another good defense to mix in and confuse your opponent. Uh, I'm going to pinch the defensive line for run defense, and then I, I really can use her Dean and put Scott, my cornerback, on any. Um, you know, anybody that I feel needs it, although for some reason I accidentally did to Dean. So, yeah, this is pretty much going to be the look. I mean, I have Travis Kelsey out here. I'm going to use her him, I would think, would be the best bet. And then everything else is pretty much, you know, that was a double drags concept. It's really hard to stop that. But it's just a good um, a good, a good defense to throw in every once in a while because it's hard to hit one-play touchdowns against. Next up, we have the DB Blitz Zero. This play here... I really just want to pinch the defensive line. It's up to you if you want to walk these cornerbacks down manually or just pinch the entire defense, which can get you in trouble. But pinching the defensive line and slaying them outside is probably the most important part. And then getting the DBs that are blitzing closer to the line is probably the second most important part. After that, i got to cover the running back. So I really have my choice whether I want to try to do it from here or maybe get my, or just cheat over a little bit. Um, if I expect a pass, I can guess pass. 
uh, but that could hurt you in the run. So at the end of the day, if you don't really know, it's safe to just not guess pass at all. As you can see, we're just going to get pressure there. That was a play action, so obviously that's going to happen. <clears throat> going to do that one more time. Like I said, I'm going to guess pass. And, you know, if I think it might be a run, it's best to stay towards this side because the running back's going to be coming in this direction most likely. As you can see, we get another play action. And we just, we're getting pressure so quick. I mean, this dude's just getting slaughtered in the backfield there. I said I am also uh, slanting outside quite a bit, which I find helps. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to wait to see a non-play action play. There we go. We get a non-play action play, and it did matter anyway as, the boat, as they just come in so fast. So that's one of, why this is one of my favorite blitzes is these, these cornerbacks just come in so fast. You don't, I mean, they, they can come in fast from where they are too. Like right here, I just pinched the defense. I was pinched the defensive line, my bad. And the one blitzing quarterback came down. So you can see that they, they can have success from this far back. It's just not nearly as fast as he completes his first pass. So the reason that I tried to show this is because obviously if you pinch your, your um, if, you, if you press the cornerbacks, they can get, you know, it can be problematic for them in other ways. I mean, you see right here, like the, the run defense is pretty good because the um, the blitzing corners but if you if you press the defense, it can be problematic in other ways with the with the secondary coverage. So you can try to run it like this. You know the pressure is not going to be nearly as quick, but you can see it still comes around, and we still get pretty good coverage on the back end. So it's really it's really you know it's up to you how you want to run it. If I'm running this, I'll press and I'll play over the top, or I'll walk them down manually. Because to me, this is a uh, this is a bailout play. You're gonna you're gonna call this if you want that instant pressure. Here, it looks like we're gonna get a run. Like I said safeties in man coverage play the run really well this year, so that's why we're gonna we're gonna be able to stop a lot of that without really doing too much. You can keep it contained too. It's kind of the same as slanting outside. Looks like we're gonna get another one of those toss runs, and there's not really a ton out there because the safeties are all over it. But yeah, definitely a good uh, good base defense, definitely a good blitz. Next up we have the Dime 3 Blitz. This is another, um, it's similar to the Man Zero, where I'm going to pinch defensive line, slam him outside, and I'm going to take my user and, and, and put him on a, uh, on a blitz if it lets me, and I'll just hover a gap before dropping back. I think the tight end's going to be a little bit more of an immediate threat here, so I'm going to go ahead and try to drop back right over Kelsey, although I got caught up on the line there. And a quick throw came in, but it looked like we still got pressure, which is the, the most important uh, aspect because this is just a straight up. Yeah, I'm just trying to send a blitz here. Can't really control if it's going to be a quick, short pass like that, but you can see how he does come right in, um, which, you know, is the point, even though the running back didn't block. It was a 5-on-5 five -five blitz. We do get an instant rusher even though he got the ball out immediately to a guy on a three-yard dig. Obviously, if that's what's going on, you could just, you know, play hard flats as I'm trying to, I guess if I if I press the defense like I did by accident there, <laughs> you can't do this portion of it. So yeah, we got our hard flats now. I don't know what's going on with the responsiveness of this game because it's really not letting me uh, do my adjustments very quickly. But this is it right here. Like I said, I'm just going to drop over to center and try to drop back. Another quick throw. Like I said, not a ton you can do about the quick throws. Um, you know, because that's, you know, I mean, this is Mahomes we're going against here. I gave myself, gave myself a good test. Not a lot more I could do about uh, the best quarterback in the game making plays. As we get a run play here, like I said, not going to be a great run defense necessarily. Outside, up the middle, a little different. As once again, it's just like not very responsive right now. So here we go, one more time. I said hoping to get a little bit of a, you know, a good passing concept here as he's just hitting these quick throws. I mean, he's recognized the blitz. That's what Mahomes is going to do. Next up, we got the cover for quarters. Once again, you're going to want to put a safety at this linebacker spot. That's ideal so that he can you can you can always use him to drop back or you could just basically, you know, just put this guy into a into a inside third. You need to create some sort of cover 3 concept is the point. Uh, if you expect run, you can pinch, if you expect pass, you can spread. 
but uh, I find it's best to, to, to use this defense. I'm trying to put this guy back on the blitz. I find it's best to use this defense like this, use that extra safety as a man defender, and it's best to use the safety that's in the direction of the running back because if it's an inside zone here, he's going to come in, he's going to play it a lot better. As you can see right here, he's the one that makes the play. Because for whatever reason, safeties in man coverage do a much better job in run defense this year. So, like I said, replace my inside third. This is pretty much it. I don't really have to make any adjustments to the line. Like I said, if you expect the run, you can pinch. And if you expect the pass, you can uh, spread them. I don't know what happened to this guy. I got stuck. And I can't move him. He's, he's, he's like glitched. But that's fine. So, guessing pass. There, I mean, you can shoot the gap, too, if you're, if you're spread like that. And I just missed it. But this is a defense because of the four down linemen that you can shoot gaps quite a bit. So, like I said, move this guy over. Make him a single high safety. And this is a really good option as there's not a lot open here. And Mahomes is going to take a coverage sack. So, very good defense. One of my favorite uh, base defenses to run. But like I said, you can put a safety at this linebacker spot. And you can put him in the middle third. And you could use her, you know, you could put these guys like this. Although here, for whatever reason... Dean didn't go in that middle high, that middle third. So like I said, you can do this. In this scenario, I find it's best probably to use like a defensive end or something. But this is another option that I would say would only use in like extreme pass heavy scenarios. As you can see, once again, the, the run defense is actually pretty good with this type of setup. Except we have the cover four drop contain. We'll keep going with random uh, tight way off. This is another play where in the past, the safeties would do a really good job playing the run where now they really don't so I would treat this the same way I was treating the cover four before I would baseline show blitz baseline then I would hit the wide triangle button twice and I would man um, I would man these guys to um, the slots I would man them to the slots or I would at least man one of them and like I said once again I keep forgetting to put um, you know safeties in the linebacker spots but I would definitely switch these guys over to like a middle a middle read or I'm trying to get this guy in a middle third, but I keep messing it up. Yeah, so now we have our cover three shell and these safeties will play at the run a lot better. They'll also play, you know, better defense as I'm just gonna take away the short route here. I mean, obviously these aren't great man defenders as he still got beat, but, uh, but this is a better way to go. I would say it's probably better to just walk these guys down manually and skip all that. And then, you know, just have it something like this because it's pretty much going to be the look. So if you expect run, you can hard flat. And I don't know what happened there. I mean, it looked like the DB fell over. My up Indian ninja was in the way. But um, it looked like it should have been an interception. So once again, walking this guy down. You don't have to, you know, man both these guys. You could always just, you know, just man one of them. Have more coverage over the middle. I can man and Kobe Dean. Like, you really just want to treat these cover four safeties like they're ineffectual now. They're not really worthwhile as we're going to get some sort of run play here as we get the reverse. And you can see, once again, the man coverage safety makes the play because that's just, for some reason, they, they do a much better job playing the run in man coverage this year than they do anything else. So that's why, to me, it's best to probably have both of them. You can see he just kind of shoots right down like he's in a, like he's in a run commit for the most part. But ultimately, this defense is just... This is probably still your best run-stopping defense. Like I said, I would just switch this over to like a cover three shell. Especially since if it's going to be an inside zone like it is here, you can see that he's running right in the direction of a man coverage safety. So you don't really need both the safeties and man coverage. It's really just the one. And that's all that's really going to matter. Just make sure you have somebody backing you up and that single high safety look. Next up, we have the cover three cloud. It's another defense that uh, it's just going to give people issues. If I'm going to use somebody, I want to stay up to three rec because the three rec is probably the best out of all of these. The hook curls aren't great, so I'd rather use one of the hook curls. Um, and this is just another defense to throw a curveball at your opponent, as they might, uh, you know, they might not necessarily uh, know how to handle it. It's definitely hard to one play touchdown cover threes. I still find that it's best to use your. Um, use this tactic where you just you know using these cloud hooks clouds cloud zones don't do much for me they're not very good so i'd rather just man the extra clouds and we're going back to sweep runs because yeah 
This is pretty much all the, the Kansas City Chiefs do, apparently, is run jet sweeps to the receiver. So, like I said, once again, not a great um, defense when it comes to uh, run run defense because it's a small package. You know what I mean? It's not really going to do too great. Uh, that hard flat there still didn't take care of that speed out route, but it did a better job than, uh, than most. Glad I'll run this one more time. As I might have accidentally messed it up. So we'll run this one more time, see if we can actually get a good play. Because we haven't really gotten a stop yet. As I accidentally. You know, we got two cloud flats. I might as well. I mean, two curl flats. I might as well go ahead and man this guy up with a cornerback. See if that does a better job. And there's speed out route. I mean, this this offense is running like uh, like somebody does online with just speed out speed out routes and um speed out routes and uh, jet sweeps. It's like an annoying offensive or annoying opponent on, online. So there, the man coverage just took care of everything. We get our interception. I was waiting for like a realistic play. We finally got one, and the first time we got one, it was an interception. So definitely, like I said. You know, you want to line these guys. This is pretty much the look here. I'm sure I'm going to let it run one more time, but I'm sure we're going to get a jet sweep. I feel that jet sweep coming. Here it is. Look at that. Look at that. I saw it coming a mile away. Oh, it was the fake. But like I said, once again, for some reason, those DBs in, converted to man coverage do a really good job. As you can see, Scott just comes around the edge. This is the secret to, to run defense this year. As this guy here, he just like runs commits, like he like knows. I mean, it's just because he's in man coverage. I don't know what it is. So a decent run defense, but a much better pass defense. Next up, we got the cover three lock. This is just a unique defense that um, a lot of people um, will have issues with. I find that these hook curls, you know, I could I could do a couple of things with those hook curls. I don't feel like the hook curls do a ton, so I'd rather man the, uh, the one of the hook curls and use the other in pass coverage in the same fashion where I'm basically just manning, you know, Kelsey or manning the slot, manning the tight end because those guys are going to be, um, you know, the best, uh, the most used assets, the, the tight end and the slot receiver get the most use. So you can see, you know, there, that's a good coverage, getting interception on the first look. I, I want the, the single high safety, the reason I'm flipping the place because I want this safety on the open side. I don't want him, I don't want so much space between those receivers. So, like I said, this is pretty much the look. I'll, pin, I'll pinch defensive line if I'm expecting a possible run. Spread it if I expect a pass. And then this is pretty much it. There's not a lot more to it. Looks like we're going to get a run here. Get that jet sweep. It's not the best run defense. I'm not going to say that it is. It's an average run defense at best. But, uh, but a pass defense is really where it's at. So, let's go and this one more time. As it looks like we're going to get another jet sweep on back-to-back -back plays. Although, like I said, once again, for some reason, defenders switch to a man coverage, do a much better job in run pursuit, as 33 was just like kind of all over that. So let's go. Let's do this one more time. It's DBs in man coverage are doing much better in run support this year. I think that's really what the thing is. Is this another one? He's got three straight. I mean, I'm done. It is what it is. Yeah, suplex him. Get that bum out of here. Next up, we have the cover six show four. Just another unique defense that I find gives people a lot of trouble um, because they don't necessarily know how to, to play against these defenses. I don't necessarily want to use the um, these hooks once again, though. The hooks are always bad, so I'm going to man them to the slot and the tight end. That's the best way to go. And you'll see how, you know, right there, that's perfect scenario as he throws it to the slot, which is basically, like I'm saying, they get the most work. Slot receivers... And tight ends get the most work. I'm also pinching the defensive line. I'm not doing it to the A tight end. I'm doing it to, to, the, to the star tight end, by the way. You really can choose, I guess. But as you can see, we're coming underneath here. We got two routes underneath here, and I can't cover them both. I just don't get a bunch of pressure. I guess in a scenario like that, that would have been one of the few scenarios where it would have been nice to have help. But, um, you know, that's not the most consistent. So I'd rather, I'd rather, this is more consistent. You're going to see this more often. I said, I could be covering, um, I could be manning that other tight end. Is, I don't know why the hard flat, I don't have my hard flat set, which is why that hard flat wasn't really there. Oh, it was a cloud flat, my bad. So that's why. I thought that was a hard flat defense, but either way. So 
So I'll do this one more time. Like I said, I'm just going to double Kelsey because he's the problem. And then I'll just watch 83 myself as we get, uh, you know, a quick throw there that gets him laid out. Like I said, this is a good defense. It's just a good defense to mix in to mess with your opponent because a lot of people don't know how to attack defenses like this. To attack a defense like this, you have to basically split the field in half and attack the cover two side, but a lot of people don't know that as we keep getting, uh, you know, whatever that is. Next up, we have the cross three fire press. Going random again. This play here, I find that it's best to just man these, um, these extra defenders. One more time, I would definitely try to have um, safeties, I keep forgetting. I would try to have safeties at these spots, but I don't feel like they do a lot on the blitz. So to me, manning them to the uh, to the slot and tight end is best. And then maybe using this guy here, even though through a cook's not a bad thing to leave alone. You could also like if you have time, spread them out like this. Kind of looks like a three-three-five defense used to look. As we're probably going to get an outside run play here one more time, uh, which is like the most used play by the Chiefs for some reason. Uh, that was all me. That wasn't really something that um, came from, uh, you know, the defense itself. This is not. A, this is a good run defense, not a great run defense. If you want to try to get pressure with this look, I find that pinching the defensive line might be the best way, but it just leaves you naked over the middle. Like I said, I don't feel like these stunts do a very good job. Um, I'll try spreading them. I'll try spreading the defensive line and guessing pass just to see what happens. Uh, and then I'll also, you know, start to play out here over the tight end in hopes that I can I can try to spread the defense out a little bit. Um, but yeah, like I said, the tight end's going to be my responsibility. We really don't get no pressure, and the middle is wide open. So like I said, not the best look. I think the best way to run this defense is definitely to um, hit the D-pad to the right twice, and then just man them to the, um, you know, man them to the... Uh, to the to the slot guys to the guys that can do the most damage which is the guys in the slot and i can pay attention to these outside receivers as you can see here we get an underneath throw although that he was almost there this said another option is you can just basically zone all linebackers which i'm not a huge fan of because once again i don't feel like hook curls do a great job but it would have probably took that away on that play so let's go and let's do that let's let's try a different setup here where we're gonna we're still gonna man that slot and then i'll just basically use your dean here I'll, I'll leave the three rack hook which is a better um you know the, the three rack hook is a better um, coverage uh hook zone anyway so now i'm just gonna basically just man this slot and i didn't mean to man dean but we'll go ahead and we'll drop this guy down and we'll put him on a, on a rush because I'm going to basically just cover Kelsey anyway, or cover the middle, where the two, you know, there's less receivers over here. And you can see we get a much better job that time as, as Mahomes has to throw it away. So there's a couple of different ways to handle this play, but mostly I would say, you know, it, it just don't use it like a like a blitz. That's the worst way, the way it's designed. I'd rather have the three rep cook running over the middle because he's one of the better. As we almost get an interception there. Um, yeah, this is definitely improved now. As you can see, now we're getting much better stops. Next up, we got the DB fire to press. Pick random again. This play here, not a lot to it. If you're expecting run, once again, you can pinch the defensive line, slant them outside. If you're expecting pass, spread them, and you can QB contain and guess pass. And then I also want to bring this guy down and just drop back. The second the play starts now i have two receivers on my left side so i'm gonna have to get on top of that it's probably better to just leave him in a hook curl and do the other side because he'll do a better job of getting in front of those zones because i gotta stay down here for a second and i can drop back on the two receivers on my side a little bit easier so we're gonna go we're gonna do this whenever he hikes the ball because so we get a play action so that's just gonna he's just gonna come right around there and be the dude's ear um, this is a well-known blitz you could also if you really think they're attacking deep you could also middle third Although I don't think that that's necessarily the best idea. I'll try with a QB contain this time. Because QB contains are working pretty good. And we're going to have a run play. But hopefully this cornerback will come around the edge there. Like I said, this is not any cover two is not a good run defense. That's especially out of this formation. Cover two, because the safeties always drop back, it just makes it weak. Uh, so I didn't even do anything there. I didn't even do the setup. I was talking too much. So yeah, no, that doesn't... <laughs> 
not going to include that as I uh, didn't expect them to hike the ball so quickly. So you can also press if you want a little bit more time when it comes to, um, you know, the cornerbacks getting off the line can be helpful. The safeties do a pretty good job of playing deep this year. As you can see there, I mean, we get a sack fumble that time. Uh, and I'm sure the press helped. Um, pressing in cover two, especially when the cornerbacks aren't out wide like this, is something you can get away with. When they're in tight like this, you can definitely you can definitely do that. Um, and he didn't actually get hands on him either. So all that really did was bring the cornerbacks closer. As you can see, I mean, they didn't have any effect in the coverage. So all, all pressing really did was just get the cornerbacks, the blitzing cornerbacks closer to the line. But that's important too because he just flies right off the edge and gets an instant sack. Next up, we got the spinner. We'll ran him again. With the spinner, I find all you really got to do is bring this guy down. You don't really have to do much else. Guess pass, I guess, would probably be the most important thing. Slanting your defense outside or slanting your line outside or keep you containing them are all good options. Uh, and if I really had my choice, I'd probably want to walk all the cornerbacks down. As you can see right there, he just gets a quick throw off that. He will get. I find that, uh, you know, obviously he's playing over the top in a defense like this is probably best. Um, you know, anything where you can really just get these DBs down. If I'm, especially if I'm pressing, the, uh, playing over the top is going to be vital. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you're basically just going to stay home for half a second. And then you can see, you know, if you, especially if somebody play actions, you're going to have pressure coming from all over. Uh, I would say it's probably best just to walk this cornerback down manually, though, as the pressure doesn't really come from this other blitzing linebacker too much. So, like I said, just bring this guy in over the, the over this area here, and you can see the, all that pressure. And you know, man coverage does a good job. Man safety does a good job in run defense. This is going to be a good run defense this year for sure. Like I said, just bring Scott down if I have a second. Guess pass. I'm not really even doing too much else. I don't really have to do anything else with the line, but I find slanting him outside or keeping containing is a good adjustment to make. And now you can see right there that over the top coverage, safeties aren't great in man coverage. They're going to get, you know, they're going to have their issues. This is not something you can run all the time. Here, the cornerback actually walked himself down, which is nice. Something I haven't had in a lot of other plays. So we're going to guess pass one more time. Hopefully, we actually get a pass. I could tell it was going to be a run, though, because that's just what this, uh, what these guys do. And like I said, man covered safety once again comes in and saves the day. Next up, we have the strong eagle slant three. Keep going random here. This play here, all you really got to do, bring this guy down, slant everybody outside, gets pass. And uh, this will be your best bet to get that cornerback off, off the edge. I just have to stay home for half a second and drop back. And you can see I was there. But whatever, he caught that through me. The pressure was definitely there too, though. As we go to the replay, um, I don't know if this guy was a play action because it looks like some sort of RPO. But yeah, he got that out instantly and he had to because this dude was like right in his, in his ribs. Except we got the zero blitz. This play here, uh, the running backs cover, which I like. So it's really just me coming down. All I really have to do is come down here. And then drop back after the snap. I don't really feel like I have to do too much else. As you can see, it comes right around the corner. Um, if you're going to run a lot of man zero blitzes, sometimes it's best to put your cornerbacks at safety. Or put one of your better cornerbacks at safety. Because they're not very good. I mean, Reed Blankenship is probably the, one of the worst starting safeties in the game. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, you know, there's not a lot of setup. I and mean, if you really want to, you can slam defensive line outside. You can keep it contained. You can guess pass. All these things can help. As you can see, the, the cornerback's consistently coming around the edge. Um, but that's not, uh, you know, it's not getting sacks because, you know, Mahomes just built different. So I can bring these guys down a little bit, but you can't gap stack them both. You can only gap stack one. So I'm going to go ahead and do this again. So looks like we're going to have our jet sweep, which is, you know, they love jet sweeps. And then once again, safeties in man coverage do the best against the run as we get a stop. I don't know why. But DVs and man coverage in general seem to do a better job. I think it's because they're looking in front of them rather than, I don't know. There's something to do with that. I'm not really sure. So we get another pick. Darius Slay is getting the most picks. And I didn't I didn't do any over-the-top adjustments or anything like that. Although you can do that, especially if there's like a speech throw on the field. But not a lot of, you know, not a lot of setup as we get the A-gap that time. A got pressure and the outside pressure. Let's watch the replay on that because I don't know what happened. I just saw this dude just coming straight through. I don't know what happened to 62. I mean, they slid over and just let this, they just let both guys get in. 
um, which is, you know, that's perfect. That's what I want. I mean, the running back was blocking too, which is the crazy part. This is a five on six, and we just got two guys in free. So all you really got to do is guess pass. You can do over the top coverages and stuff like that if you want. QB containing, I feel like that helps. Though, as you can see, we uh, he's got to throw the ball instantly. The pressure's coming, and, you know, this this is just just getting tight coverage. So I'll QB contain one more time. Like I said, if I want to, I can spread. Not really sure, you know, which versions of these are the best. But he's just getting that ball out super quick, and these receivers are getting blasted. I guess he'd rather his receivers get blasted than himself because this cornerback's coming off the edge every single time. Haven't had a jet sweep in a while. As we get another A gap. Yeah, that's the QB contain setup. The QB contain setup seems to be working the best. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.